point is, you may recall that the people voted by about two to one in the other direction. So I'm not sure that's really an item that belongs in there. Right. And, and followed by the next one that says, split school system is bad, and then high school is too big. We can't have both those things. Either you have big high schools or you have multiple school, school systems. And the county system has long in its plan that it's going to build a high school when it has the money out at Pine Grove. So then there'll be three high schools. And yeah, football won't like that. But, you know, I think that the issues in education, we sort of, just never mind all these sentences. The issue in education is, are our students getting a free, high quality public education? Are we providing that to our K-12 students? Because public education, it's free. We pay for it with our tax dollars. And is it high quality? Are they learning what they need to, to be successful when they come out, whether they go to college or not? Are we doing that? also includes the issue of, dare I say it, poverty, because students going to school hungry are not going to learn very well. Right. I think that our school, the loss that they get, um, somebody forget from the school, two meals, they get two meals at school? Right, yeah. Have you yeah. seen the calorie count on those meals? No. Not good. But, but you know, they, they are getting zero meals probably at home, so they're getting two at school. So yes, poverty is a problem in our community. That's not a secret. Does it anybody do from um, education from the school system? Mm -hmm. No, no. Do anybody know hear about any of the STEM school? You know, we have some schools that are called designated for STEM schools. Anybody know the schools that we have? Mm -hmm. I, I just know have a couple. I don't know why I know about it. I don't know which school. It is designated a STEM school. I just wonder if we had any others. Those are supposedly schools that are geared to high, high education, high quality education. I'm just wondering. Well, does that mean we can get rid of split school system is bad and high school is too big? Uh, I would say so. Okay, great. Let's do that. <laughs> Yo, I think if we ignore the fact that we have two school systems that are a factor in how this community is currently growing, I feel like we're doing ourselves a disservice. Okay, so you want to keep split school systems bad? Mm -hmm. No. Can you explain how you think the two school systems are affecting things? I think people are living or not living in different locations in the county based on what school district and what school system they're attending. And I think that that is potentially a negative impact on our um, on the city of Valdosta. Mm -hmm. and, and I think maybe right now it's not as much of an issue, but long term it could be detrimental. And I think that if that's going to be harmful, it's something we should at least put on the table as something to discuss. I'm not saying split school system is bad is the right terminology because it's not. But we have an issue in this community with two school systems and how it impacts where people live. Um, how the community is growing. And right now, in my opinion, it's negatively impacting the city of Alaska. I'd, I'd say it's also negatively impacting those of us who live in agricultural regions mm -hmm. because that's one of the things that directs the growth mm -hmm. north mm -hmm. from Alaska. I certainly agree with you. There's an issue that the way to write it down that is different from what's going on. And I think that's the challenge. But I mean, I think we all know about this consolidation vote, but. I think there is an issue there between the school systems and where people are moving and not where people are building that long term I see as a concern for the city. If it's a long term concern for the city, then that's a long term concern for the county. Well, and not just our county, because we see people building in Lanier <coughs> County. You know, they're sure. totally moving, you know, they're, they're right on the border. They're right on the border of the county. They're in Lanier, um, you know, they're in Ray City. They're, they're, you know, little, these little developments springing up out because um, they want to be by base. But. And, and this is one of the things where Chattanooga, you know, consolidated with its county, 
Unfortunately, it didn't solve that problem. A lot of people moved to the next county and actually across the state line into Georgia. So, if, if, um, let me give a stab at trying to say a condensed version of what they're saying. Different perceptions of two school systems is driving different growth rates in the city and county as well as the direction of growth, which has adverse effects on both Valdosta and Miles County. Mm -hmm. Is that more or less what you're getting at? Sure. That's the concern is the long-term adverse effects of our current... Perception. It's a perception, though, because there are people who will, you know, stand up and, and say, I don't want my kids to go to any school except for Valdosta School. I don't want them in the county schools. I want them in the city schools. We're happy to live in the city, and we're happy to have the diversity of the students that are in the city, and we like the school that our children go to. So, you you know, you might say, well, it drives people to, to the county, but also there are people who love the city school system, you know. There are some, but... Private developers build subdivisions and houses where they think they can sell them. Mm -hmm. To your point about where they're going to the county, there are a few people that love the city, but it's not enough to affect the development of the county. You can see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The land left in the city. And I don't there's, have there's oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty of developable land in the oh, city. Yeah. The developers aren't building subdivisions in the city because they want to sell lots. And yeah. They go to the county to do that. And they're plenty of land over there on perimeter road and some city limits. And that's the concern is, while well, short term, the county certainly, I think you'll see in upcoming census information, there's a tremendous amount of growth, but at some point, it really negatively impacts the, the city. Mm -hmm. It really it negatively impacts the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You look at the, the houses in downtown about or, or middle of the town, even around the Bay Tree and Garanto area, the houses that the majority were owner occupied houses just ten years ago compared to what a rental neighborhood is now. Yep. You can't say the school system doesn't have an effect on that in our city versus county. Well, I know we're spilling over into housing. Well we yeah, talked about that in housing last time it's too a lot. I think yeah. that's a it might not be the only factor but it certainly is a big Factor, whether it's based on perception or myth or another attitude that is not correct. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I think that's, if we oh. ignore that facet of the community, we're not being honest. Oh, I don't think it's just perception. There are real differences in the school system as far as graduation rate. I'm not familiar with what the numbers are as far as that perception. I mean, there, there, is, there are some realities underlying it, but there's also a huge part of it is perception. Well, and, and coming back to poverty, you know, mm -hmm. the more affluent people when live in the mm -hmm. surrounding the area, the and their kids go to school with a full stomach, and snacks at home, and poor people. And their parents make them study when they get home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, and and you know, if you're in a household where mom and dad are working two jobs each, just minimum wage jobs trying to do the best they can. I mean, Sandra, you, you take care of kids after school. You know what the problem is. So that that's the problem, really, that we need to solve. Is that, you know, it says, it gives a lot of symptoms here, you know, lack of parental involvement, mentoring programs needed. I mean, these are all symptoms of our problem. Well, how does consolidating the school solve that? Well, it, it doesn't. No, it because doesn't. there would be still multiple tracks of school that you could be in. People will cluster around the school they want to go to. You know, if they want to go to Pine Grove, they're still going to... If, if I may try well, They're doing that now. They're commuting to WG9. Mm -hmm. and they're leaving the south side, commuting to WG9. Mm -hmm. and there's a school in the system there, but they're not going. Mm -hmm. And I hear you, but it's, a, it's easier to change a school district than it is to change a city limit. You can make that argument, which certainly is a valid argument, but it's, once again, if you look at what happened in Chattanooga, effectively what you'll end up doing is people will not just be fleeing but also they'll be fleeing the county. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's, it's one of these things that sounds like a simple fix, but if you actually go look at how it's actually worked, mm -hmm. it doesn't really fix the problem. 
mean, I'm, I'm all for spelling out the problem because we need to find a way to fix it. I just, you know, I've learned how to convince that consolidating two systems fixes the problem. But there's got to be some other way to address it. What it is, I'm afraid I don't know either. It's far from simple, no question about it. Probably yeah. there is no single fix. Well, I just so think they, we need to have it here because yeah. we don't have it. Oh, yeah. we're, we're losing five, ten years on just lifting a problem up that should be at least on the radar. Yeah. So pretty much. If I could bring up the bigger problem that people alluded to, and you're probably going to say this is not where it belongs, but we should put it somewhere. Let's sprawl. It, housing, we talked about it before. When we go back to housing, we'll see it again. Well, yeah. and, and and land use, use. Yeah. development, right. right? But if I can just say the few sentences I want to say, which is the sprawl outward from the city deprives places like the south side of Valdosta of any development, the sort of development that would attract businesses and people who wanted to live there. And the upper effect, which is located in what people call it as a bad neighborhood in Chicago, it changed radically. Right? So, you know, you know it, yes, indeed, the sprawl is partly in the Effect to the perception of the school systems. But on the other hand, if the county and dare I say the tax assessors who could come to grips with the sprawl problem and do something to drive development towards places that actually need it, that might have a positive effect on the school systems. That's more like five sentences. <laughs> <laughs> well, a few, few sentences. Okay, so we kind of consolidated this all into one sentence. Concern about long-term adverse effects to city and county growth patterns due to local perception reality of quality of the two school systems. And that covers pretty much a lot of it. And then we can go in the policies, we can attack it a little bit more. And if there are any programs well, and so then for you have opportunities, you want to say that we want to support pre-K funding. You know, we want to search out programs which will support pre-K funding. Um, and we want to, you know, right? I mean, Joyce, you want this. No, when you say you, poor pre-K funding, I, I don't get that. I need somebody to explain that to me. That, that there's not enough funding for pre-K. It's funding. They don't have facilities to sometimes to take the funds that they have. Okay, well, so then we need, that's that's an issue, is that we need facilities to house pre-K. Instead of funding, maybe it's poor pre-K facilities? Lack of. Lack of, uh, lack of pre-K facilities. Okay, lack of pre-K facilities. Cool. You know, maybe we want to have pre-K facilities in the Lake Park Mall. With internet. <laughs> With internet. With internet, yes. Maybe there's an educational grant somewhere you can apply for to put internet in for, for pre-K. For pre-K. Cooking lessons. There you go. Entering. Our superintendent is working on the pre-K that more schools to take in more pre-K more pre-K schools within the school system. Already program located within the city. Yeah. He's working on that now. Who is? The new superintendent. The new superintendent. Yes. Good. What are the hours and typical pre-K programs we're talking about? Eight to two thirty. Eight to two thirty. They don't go all. It's like they don't go all day. It's like. Uh, I drive school bus with pre-K. We have an eight o'clock route that say from eight to about eleven, and then okay. they, they go home. Then then the other if there's a they can use them back to school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So they don't just keep them there that long. It's like that wouldn't be a long day for pre-K. Cool. Okay. Um, so what are other issues here that? specifically want to focus on that we keep them in here in oh, oh. education and I would love to have somebody for them. Yeah, you know, um, Beach was here the last time and, and he's not here. He said some really good stuff about education last time. Um, I, I'm going to say this, probably everyone will hate me. Um, culture focused on sports over books. 
that's an issue. That's an issue. That is a problem. Yeah, that's an issue. That's an agree. That's an agree. Okay. And which other ones do you want to keep in? Let's go. Let's go that. See, I have a question with this soft skill. <laughs> Is a soft skill is needed in the education area. I think that's a pre K thing, and that's an early childhood education. We need to be somewhere focused on that because when we start talking about soft skills and jobs, and I know you were talking about it, it gets to the problem when we start talking about soft skills for adults. So I think we need to go back and be in the early childhood education program because that's where you're going to start to move into the future. So do you want to say that soft skills are needed in all levels of education? At the early childhood education, not all levels. I think early childhood education is where soft skills are. So I should be shaking the head if you agree with me. <laughs> so when, when we get to be seven, we don't need them anymore? Yeah. I mean, we started talking about early childhood education. I mean, when you get in middle school kids, if they haven't picked up a couple soft skills by then, they just lost. But it's the same thing about when they get to be well, adults. But, the, but the thing is, you have to continue to expect that sort of behavior all along. You can't say, you know, that. Okay, we're going to teach you here, and that's it. And yeah, you know, you have to have those behaviors reinforced all the way through, or you're going to. Not through middle school and high school. Yes. I disagree. I think you need to keep doing it. You know about we put in all, especially in early or start in early education and continue through all levels. So I mean this. Like an emphasis you know, on soft skills. Yeah, soft skills need to be. In, but I agree. You, know, you, you can't. You, know, you, you try to do the most work the earliest on because that's when it's the most easiest and it's the most productive. But. If you ignore them in college or... Well, or, you know, in middle school, when they're, you know, the way middle schoolers are, can't let them get away with stuff then. You have to keep saying, hey, we're still doing these rules. Okay. What are other ones here that you definitely all agree with that need to stay? about transportation circuitries. One that doesn't seem to be on this list, I don't know where it belongs, but uh, I think Joyce is familiar with this one. It's hard for people to, for parents to be helping out their children when, when they're locked up. So the ankle monitoring bank, for example, and I forget the name of the new program that's being proposed. Town and Village Report. Right, should help with that because you know, why should people be stuck in jail for minor drug offenses? It's silly. Yeah. Ten years from now, all that stuff will be legal. <laughs> should that be under education? Well, it's a parental involvement thing. Um, the, the issue is that um, not all families have parental involvement. and. It's hard to be parentally involved if you're, if you're not there. if you're absent. So. Yeah. Or if you're working two jobs. Exactly. So that's an issue that definitely should stay due to various after school program hard to be What about village rates are coming close to maxing out? Is that anything that should be under education? That even, that even makes sense. <laughs> okay, let's take that out. Does it affect education? It definitely affects education. You have about two comparisons about education and also the services. So there's a new balance here. So I think we can mark that with education and those I don't think. Which one are we talking about? I'm sorry. You said about the millage. I mean, you have like the educational millage and you have the millage for the town. You have to start looking at the educational millage. That's one thing that's all the can and all the sign at the max. I thought, yeah, state law says you can only charge, you can only set the millage rate for education so high without getting something special done. 
of our districts were getting close to that. Sounds like a lobbying to say educational that was very concerned. I don't think it's general. Graduation rate in schools. Yeah, that's a problem. Need improvement. Okay. Need improvement. Uh, need to better prepare students for real life with basic skills. Oh yeah. That's soft skills, but I mean that's there. Okay. Like, so well, should we? They knew like how money worked when they got out. Yeah. <laughs> should should we keep that? I mean, delete that and just keep it under because we already have the soft skills. Okay. Well, I think it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. Basic skills, basic skills, like skills. writing and arithmetic, soft skills, is how you get along with people. Yeah, training and arithmetic. Well, you know, knowing that you're supposed to come to work on time every day, mm -hmm. um, dress appropriately with your lunch. That's soft skills. skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next two I think we already have in economic development. Uh, what about partnerships with the private sector? in education. I benefited from an internship. It sounds like that great promise partnership is maybe something like that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so need more programs like that. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, how about um, we got lack of parental involvement mentoring programs? I think that could feed into that private sector partnership. Mm -hmm. Well, and supporting programs like community partners in education. Okay. Uh, Safe routes to schools. Mm -hmm. It took me a minute. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Okay. Um, Lakeland Highway's already done. Yeah, but that's def. I mean, is that that's definitely an issue with walkability, right? Safety. I think so. Yeah. I think well, that's more and, general. I think well, I safety think of in, in community infrastructure, you know, if there's sidewalks and they're just gonna put a sidewalk over by Lawrence Middle, but you know, that's a place where we're thinking about what is our vision for our community and then what are the things that we're saying in here where we can get money to do those things. So safe routes to schools is a thing where we wanna get money so that kids can ride their bike to wiregrass. Imagine you were gonna get on your bike and ride to wiregrass. But I don't think that's that's only safe routes to school. I think that's making it too limited. So I would I would just reward it to say something about the safety of, of the kids going all to school, students getting going to, to school. school. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that's a, yeah. Eventually. I mean, it's sidewalks. It's basically Before we can get safer, we got to get sidewalks in, well, in, well, a, in the poor area of town, not just everything on the north side. Right. We got to right. get sidewalks on the south side and the east side, bicycle trails over there. Right. That's where the kids need it. Right. Them the one they that's how this will support all of those things. Right. right. Putting right. it in that safety category right. and say, yeah. in order to have safety, we have to have sidewalks. So let's and, get and some sidewalks. And that also includes, like, <coughs> uh, you know, people policing. Cro and, and crosswalks. crosswalks. Yeah, I saw somebody crossing you know, Ashley Street in a place where I'm like, you know, if you walk 10 steps more, you could have been at the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. That new um, business at Rocky Ford Road is an opportunity for the county to move stuff south of Valdosta related to all this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, I hope, I'm very excited about that being <laughs> I know it's being worked on. I'm very hopeful about that. Um, I guess the next one. Awareness of education resources and facilities, since that's an issue, a lack, lack of, a lack of. is that an issue? In this area, Tom? Is that really well, if somebody wrote it down, for them it was an issue that they didn't know what educational resources and facilities were available. Yeah. Uh, now, I don't know whose responsibility that is. But that was also three years ago, so I mean, right. is that, you know, and the update, is that still an issue, do you feel, or has there been a lot of... Well, and I think that maybe this can be, we can scratch it off here, because we're going to talk about intergovernmental cooperation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And so in intergovernmental cooperation, it's going to include the school systems, because they're right. government agencies, to say we're not only are the cities and the county going to, but their school system are all going to publicize. We're having this whole community calendar thing right now. City's calendar is the community calendar. So everybody's going to get their stuff. We're going to have one one way where we advertise things. So it will be better. Thank you. I'm an optimist, Joyce. I've not heard of the awareness being an issue. I've just heard, you know, resources right. are an issue, not necessarily they go on a program and no one shows up. Yes. That, you know, and that could programs. be, like Rachel said, an opportunity under intergovernmental coordination. Um, IT skills needed. I know we heard that a lot in the digital economy plan. Um, and it wasn't necessarily programming, it was, you know. Basic computer operations. Basic computer operations, and it was like how to build those things and how to put the lines in the ground. All of the supporting IT skills were not available. And um, Tower, Tower, Tower Cloud said they couldn't get people, local people, to work. They have to import them. And that's just line them. Line that stuff and being able to fix it. So, okay. Think about what a wiregrass has, what they teach now compared to 10 years ago. Right. And their programs on telecommunications, the new ones that are very good, very popular because that's right in that alleyway. Um, basic or real work preparation needed, go, that goes right into the soft skills, right? Mm -hmm. um, state sets low expectations. Well, did, didn't we just address that? Basic. Work preparation is that the same as soft skills. Or not? Well, we we had we had the two here. We better prepare students for real life, and then we had the soft skills. So it's covered with both of them. Okay. Go ahead. Um, lack of skill training. Well, let's go back to state sets low expectations. Um, uh, the school districts in our area, if I understand this correctly, are are not underperforming. Rules district wide. We don't. We're our, our districts are not underperforming. Is that correct? We might have. Well, we don't have schools that are on, on the list, right? Schools that were um, recently taken off the list, like VHS, they were just taken off. The okay, list. and what's the graduation rate of VHS? Uh, okay, what it what is it? Sixty percent? Something like that. Okay, 60, is that? Uh, is that a high expectation or a low expectation that a school that graduates 60% of its students is not underperforming? I mean, if I got a 60%, if I got, it does, let's just think about this for a minute, people. If 100% is 100% and you got a 60, did you pass the class? No, you didn't pass the class because 65 was passing the class. It depends on how the comparison was set up. They had measure for at least 60 percent to graduate from the standards from a couple of years ago. So I don't well, know how well right, you know, there's the whole question about, you know, do they count all the students that start because we have a community that has high turnover because of the base and people come in and out and which students do you count and all that. Okay, is 60 percent, no matter how you count it, is that good enough for our community? Or do we want to say that we'd like to have, oh, let's shoot high. Be like county school and have 78 percent graduate. Is that good enough? I mean, the state sets a low standard to say that you're you're not underperforming if you're graduating 60 percent of your kids. So I would agree with that that the state sets low expectations. Now, is there something we can do about that? Probably not. But should we have a higher expectation that we want to have more of our students graduate and be functional, tax-paying? Contributing citizens who can come to these meetings? Yes. We'll include that. Because we already look at the need improvement in graduation rates, so not only need improvement in the rates, but also need to improve expectations of about the rates. Yeah. Okay. What percentage have dropped out before they get to high school? They can't. In it, they, they actually changed the. They're 16? They changed the. Didn't they last year? No, but you, you're 16 in high school, right? 
I remember plenty of people dropping out when I was in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> They just stay in the eighth grade till they were 16 and then yeah. they're done. When I was in middle school, there were lots of people 16 and 17 years Unless old. Unless they just changed it, you don't even have to go to school. I thought they changed the age last year to 17. I mean, you don't even have to start. Go out and ask the county if you don't want to put your kid in school. Well, yeah, but most parents want to have their kid in school. They, want, they don't want to have the burden of trying to teach them at home. They want to use this, we're paying for it as taxpayers, to public education system. My point no. is that 60% or whatever it is, right, is even that actually high because it doesn't count the ones that never even get into high school. Right. So lack of accountability? Where, I mean, I guess we don't even know how many. <clears throat> One thing I think we're missing too is forgetting about a lot of people are taking their kids into this homeschooling as well. Mm -hmm. We're getting this charter school, so we should look at kind of the percentage of are we getting more kids going to be in homeschool? Are we getting more kids going to other schools like the charter schools? And our, our kids that are being homeschooled, are they being successful when they get to like be how they, uh, of age? Right, that's what I was wondering. Are they, uh, their percentage of graduating doing a better job with that? Because I've been noticing, I've been hearing some of them talking about how they homeschool their kids, and they are getting, well, I guess they gear them to the type of job they want them to get, and they get some pretty good job. So that's another thing I'm going to do. I've noticed it. Well, and what can we do to improve the schools to make sure that every student can have that opportunity? You know, every parent can't homeschool their kid. It's not possible. And, you know, it's great if you can and you can do that, but not every parent can. Parents have to go to work and earn money. They got a group now to do, like homeschool kids. Uh, I had this one that was telling me, like, Joyce might have her kids, and my kids, and I guess a few in the neighborhood, they all are homeschooled by Joyce. You know, one person, a teacher, they what they call homeschooling, and she homeschooled all our kids in the neighborhood if I can over there at the school. Well, well, here's the thing. In my opinion, this is strictly my opinion, that becomes the beginning of the downfall of public education. So we don't want to have our community go that way. We want to change our public schools so that they are providing quality education to every student that walks through the door. But you also have to change how the teachers are thinking also. You get those younger teachers coming in the classroom. Some of them are just about a paycheck. They are not about the child. Well, and the charter schools are have the idea, I don't know if the one here does or not, but the one that my daughter teaches at does, says that teachers are interchangeable. And anybody can walk into that classroom and teach pre-calculus. And that is false. Not any teacher can walk into that classroom and teach for calculus. So at least the problem you're talking about. So is that how how would we word that as a as a local education issue? Just to narrow that down for the college. I I'll go back to my very first statement that every child deserves a free, high quality public education. How about teachers should be treated as professionals like doctors and lawyers? Yeah, I would be with that. S simply be treated as professionals. I mean they uh, teachers nowadays have a master's degree, so they they not only learned their subject area of English or science or math, but then they've gotten a degree in learning how to be a teacher. They are professionals. So but then they go life. back to the same thing that you have for a time. You know, when you have lack of parental involvement, that's going to cause problems because there's nobody concerned about what you're teaching. They're they're not going to do really that. So I think we need to look at how we can increase or enhance parental involvement within the school system. If you want to make a difference, you got to start when they're young. Come down to the Boys and Girls Club. Spend some time with those kids. Volunteer. Well, yeah, and the, and the pre-K funding. You know, like Joyce said, you know, you need to have those kids learn right at the start. This is the way we behave in school. This is how we learn. This is how we get along with. Yeah. You know, all those things that you're supposed to learn in kindergarten or before. Yeah, but it's go back to the same thing. We keep programs accountable. You know, we, we look here in, in Lowndes County. We have 
which your percentages rise by the children going into pre-K and going into the education program. We have almost 22% of the kids that's going to Pit Stop program. That's a federal mandated thing that you include parental involvement. But who checked to find out whether that is being done? Mm. So if you take that percentage of children and spread them out through the school system where you have involved parents, how to work with children, how to work in the educational system, then you will have more parental involvement. So if everybody drop off and nobody do anything, so we're not going to have the children going to be the same as they're educating themselves, working for themselves, and not nobody to have a voice for them. So the most important thing is having a voice for the educational program for the parents. So that's why I can do this on the detail today. Thanks. We got some we got some really good issues and opportunities out of this actually. <laughs> um, and I, I think looking over just just to bring this a little bit to a uh, let me just ask a couple questions here. Class is too large. Is this still an issue? I, I don't know what the class size is. Uh, it's on the kids on the HP. Okay. I don't know. So that's really and um, okay, the opportunities, we've had a lot of suggestions here with opportunities, so I think Ariel and I are just going to go take this discussion that we had, because we've taken extensive notes, um, and we have addressed pretty much all of these, and we're going to uh, do the issues and opportunities based on, uh, based on the discussion we had today, because with all the comments that went back and forth, there are quite a few. But one, one, one thing that I would like to do really quick is let's go around and everybody say one short issue and one opportunity with the school system and education that we have not covered here. So if we want to start with you, one that a short issue and opportunity that we have not covered in here. <laughs> yes, we will count. But one that is not on here. So if, if there isn't one, because we, I think we covered a broad array of issues. Just if you have something we'll you know, want, we'll, we'll look at the, all the notes that we have and, and work them into And then next time we'll do a quick, quick recap of things that, that we have. To, but just something that we have not brought out for education. Two cents. I just said what I wanted to say. Right. Okay. All right. Ag education. Uh, Ag education. <laughs> Agricultural <laughs> education. Okay. Mm -hmm. As an issue and an opportunity. And opportunity both. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ag education. All right. We touched on everything yeah. that I wanted to say. Okay. Well, I think we covered the issue side of it really well, but an opportunity that I do not see listed here is um, advanced placement programs that both Wounds and Valhasta, but in addition to that, you also got international baccalaureate at Valhasta, right. of which I am a graduate of in 2011. I just graduated from Georgia back in December. Um, but um, those are not listed there, and I think those are something that makes us stand out as a community. Next place is IB School, is in Cal excuse me, Calhassi or Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something that makes DOS really stick out as an uh, educational opportunity and something we should embrace. Good, very good point. Jason. We heard from an economic developer at Wiregrass a couple weeks ago and he talked about um, an education and all the research they did and the studies they did and the thing that they found was providing an environment that fosters high quality teachers and so I think trying to make this community a place that provides incentives to attract high and keep high quality teachers and that was the basis of all their studies and all their research was enabling a place that lets high quality teachers, it attracts high quality teachers. Fosters and retains. High quality teachers. And retains. Yeah. One, one of these attracts, but retains. Yeah. 
So it wasn't about, and they looked at opportunities like, do we invest in the students? Do we invest in the facilities? Do we invest in the community? And it was about investing in the teachers. So um, I think that's one thing I put down. And then the other one, I'm not sure if it's an issue opportunity, but he mentioned programs like, um, it was called the Kalamazoo Promise, where their city had a problem. It's Kalamazoo, Michigan. And their city had a problem where they were losing population based on similar issues we were facing with the city and the county moving right over the border. And what they did is they got private business owners together and they came up with a program um, where they put they pooled their resources and they basically said if you meet these criteria and graduate from our school system, we will provide your children with four years of any educational institution in the state of Michigan. And it turned into an economic development incentive where people actually began to really locate there because they were having trouble, you know, selling their own home in the city limits, where mm -hmm. it became, you know, an attractor rather than something that people were fleeing from. Okay. And so I'm That's not saying we should do that, but it was a program that actually encouraged people to locate in the city, but it provided an incentive for doing so, which was four years in a, in this case, a, a Georgia-funded institution. So. That's cool. It was a very innovative program, and it was all privately funded. It, and the onset was all private, so it's called the Kalamazoo Promise. It's very, very interesting. And we already have the Kalamazoo Promise. We have the private sector partnerships and an issue that there is a lack of, so this could be an opportunity to model something maybe after yes. that. I mean, just okay. these very innovative public-private partnerships offer yeah. an incentive to locate and, and not only locate but graduate. Right. From, from you know, at that time, the inner city, the inner city school system. Oh, that's good. I think on education, we should allow Dr. Payson and some of the school board yes. members to be a part of this at the next meeting. Yeah, we'll need to make that he an should be personally to invited yeah. because he has a lot of goals that he want to bring in the system being brand new. So I think before you can come up with these ideas, you need to work with somebody that's dealing with these children every day and not just you know, sitting around the porch on the table talking about that we really don't get like Wiregrass Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. and both of the both of the school superintendents bring them in on this. Mm -hmm. And we, we invite everybody, you know, so at last last meeting we had um, people here from the education system. So um, do you invite them personally or do you just do a a, a group text? Well, now we do a group text, but initially it was all individual. So, but what we do once, you know, with these issues and where we see that we're lacking attendance in some specific areas, we do go back and then specifically talk with these. Now some guys. of these things you're talking about here, yeah. you talked about these same ideas in mm -hmm. board meetings. And that's why I was saying you can let him come and explain what's going on in the high school and what he feels need to be brought into the school with pre-k, et cetera. Right. Is education going to be the topic at the next meeting? Or uh, a recap of it. A recap of it. So I think what we're going to do, based on your, your suggestion also, is mm -hmm. once we have this revised and, and sent back out, we will make an effort to meet with them personally and, and go over these. You know, so. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'll touch on quite a few things. I have nothing to add. Okay. Not not basic concerns to find the fees with the department and the human service and with the school system to enhance greater parent participation. Okay. We got one more comment. Okay. And education should include should be integrated with local agriculture, nutrition and Healthcare, integrating with local agriculture with its parents involved, integrating with nutrition. You know, a lot of the problems that students have in school is because they're not healthy, and nutrition is a big cause of that. And healthcare, why shouldn't the medical industry in this area be helping out with the schools like all the other businesses? And of course, ESU actually does a pretty good job of using local ingredients in its cafeterias and so forth that could build on that to expand into agricultural and nutritional and health care education in the big three schools. Well, that's, that's, 
And Wiregrass has a horticultural program. Yep. You know, so that's a that's an opportunity that you know meshes nicely with our local industry. And culinary, so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wiregrass, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next meeting is on March twenty first. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I can't. Um, is that at five o'clock again? Does that work for everybody better than? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's its time of the planning commission work session. Mm -hmm. How we said it's. Or I don't think we announced the time yeah. because it was the same night as planning commission work session. Yeah. They start at five thirty. I don't think we announced the time. This next one does coincide with that work session. Okay. The twenty first at least. Yeah, is that is that a day when we want to do it? Because it's or do you want to do it a different day? I mean I think Mondays work well for everybody and then let me give everybody a little bit of homework. Um, so we will revise the education and send it out. So make sure you give us feedback on whether there's anything else and we'll also see if we can draw in the education and help people a little bit more. We have a lot of contacts still from the digital economy plan for Lowndes and Valdosta, so I will give those to Ariel so we can bombard them a little bit more with invitations to come. For the next time, after the recap on education, uh, we're going to go into community wellness. Now, there are not as many issues and opportunities, but if you want to go ahead and pre-read that, uh, that is page 13 and 14. If you want to reread those, pre-read those and, and maybe come up with some that you want to keep or that you delete so we can all move through that a little bit faster and, uh, and get this accomplished. So is, is the next meeting on the 21st at 6, coinciding with the Planning Commission? Do you have a big agenda for that, please? Right now, I've got three cases. So we've got a bigger agenda than we had last time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, should we keep it on the same day, or should we come up with a different date? I mean, we can always, you know, I'd rather, I just hate to keep people waiting. I'd rather right. say 16 if we start at 615 than say 630 and be done at 545. Yeah, now it would, it would go to 8 o'clock then, from mm -hmm. 6 to 8. We can't come at all, so don't come. Yes, All right, so let's let's keep it at that date then, and then. Should we have it here or at the? Well, we keep the work session yeah. over there. Just yeah, we'll keep it right over there. Okay. It's going to be at uh, six o'clock, or as as soon as possible after the planning commission. Okay. And when you get the email from Ariel, we have, we'll have all the revisions that we talked about today. And then please go over the community wellness so we can talk about that next time. And we'll see if we can get healthcare people here in 